I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, uh, take it away, Doctor. Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon, is brought to you this week by drbillbailey.net netcast. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time once again for the Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast show thing. <laughs> yes. You may notice something rather remarkable, and that is, wait for it, the lighting is awesome. <laughs> you say, Dr. Bill, how is the lighting so awesome? Well, I'll tell you. I have a new lighting setup, and I'll talk more about that in just a moment. But first, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. And as I said before, we are also proud members of the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Yes, but we are proud members of that as well. So, so anyway, the lighting. Isn't it awesome? I mean, my skin tones are all nice and, you know, pinkish. <laughs> anyway, no harsh, bright lights, no, no funky, weird lighting issues. I'm just so happy. Uh, yes. <laughs> now you might say, Dr. Bill, what kind of lighting outfit do you have? Well, I'll show you. It's right, I pointed in the wrong direction. It's right over here. <laughs> Get out of the way a little bit so you can see it. That's it. <laughs> you say, what? Yes, that is the Cowboy Studio lighting outfit that I got off of the old Amazon. Yes. It works so well. It's amazing. Um, I showed you the image, so I won't have to turn it and show it. But it's got like white umbrellas and and reflecting the light, and you know, it even they even have those CFC bulbs that kind of twist, you know, <laughs> which is odd. But it's also balanced for daylight, 5500 Kelvin. Now, for those of you that aren't into videoing, you're probably going, what he say? <laughs> Don't worry about it. It just means that the color temperature of the lighting is correct for daylight, which is what most cameras are want to video at. So anyway, I told you that one day, my beard's all kind of sideways, but anyway, I told you that uh, one day I would talk to you about how to do a video netcast, vodcast, video on demand, VOD, vodcast. Uh, today is not that day. <laughs> but it's coming! Yes. Alrighty then. Um, we have stuff as usual to talk about, and actually it's it, a lot of it is quite good. Some of it is eh. <laughs> What are you going to do? Anyway, um, first off, and it, pardon me while I reach, thud, <laughs> I, hit, I hit the camera of the tripod. It's just so professional. <laughs> no, it's not. Ooh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to plug in the, the power, so I'm running off battery. So if I go blink and I'm gone, you'll know why. Anyway, I got the Chromecast box. <laughs> I know, I'm still celebrating the fact that I, I found the Chromecast box. I'm odd that way. I'm odd a great many ways. Anyway, the thing is, I bring that up, not because I'm excited about the box. I kind of have gotten past that. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, <laughs> but... I do have an undocumented tip for Chromecast users. 
If you are a Chromecast user, this is this is something you'll you'll want to know. I did. So let's say you've pulled up a web page in your Chrome browser in, on your computer, which I'm looking at over here, my computer, and you click the Chromecast button up in the upper corner of the browser to use your, you know, to display your video from your Chrome tab over to your HD TV. You've done that. And then you want to play a video on your TV, so you just expand the video up to full screen and it starts playing on your TV. But let's say that while the video is playing, you want to do something else on your computer. It's kind of, you know, locked in videoing mode. Well, you can go Alt-Tab. This is the secret undocumented tip. You do Alt-Tab. Your TV will continue to show the video you selected, but you can do, use your computer to do something else entirely. Because we have short attention spans. <laughs> you know we do. We're internet folk. All right, another cool thing that happened this past week. Oh, man, I'm so excited. And that is WordPress 5.0 is out. Dude. Now, you may or may not know, I was talking about how I wasn't going to talk about how video netcasts are made, but this is a little, a little bit, just a tiny bit of information, and that is that Raw Voice, the folks behind Blueberry, and the Tech Podcast Network, of which we are a proud member, as I mentioned earlier, they, Raw Voice Communications, Raw Voice Incorporated, whatever they are, their full name is, but it's Raw Voice, Todd Cochran and his folks, have a podcasting software plugin for WordPress called PowerPress. Okay? And I use it here on the Dr. Bill Show, and it is awesome. Actually, it's quite a bit beyond awesome. It's over into epic. Okay? So anyway, they have a new version. Version 5 is out. And it introduces uh, latest web media playback by introducing the media element uh, .js HTML5 media player, which is cool, and many other features. It has an advanced mode and a default mode, which is easier for folks that aren't advanced, <laughs> as you might expect. I mean, dude. Now. The CIO of Raw Voice, which is the Chief Information Officer, is Angelo Mandato. I'm probably not pronouncing his last name quite correct, but forgive me, Angelo. Anyway, dude, he is a tech dude, I'm telling you. He wrote PowerPress, and it is just awesome software. And they've already come out with a 0 0.1 update, which I'm sure is a bug fix or whatever. You know, when you release it to all of us tech podcast folk, we tend to beat it into submission. <laughs> and we find things and we report them and Angela fixes them. That works for me. Anyway, um, also, speaking of the Chromecast, uh, Google has released an official Chromecast app for the iPhone iPad. Now, you know how it is. iPhones and iPads tend to run the universe these days. Well, not as much as they used to. They're actually beginning to be somewhat old-fashioned. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I am so much into my... Let me... <laughs> I keep reaching for things. This is my Nexus 10 tablet. Much awesomeness. So you can see the lighting outfit there in the screen. But, uh... Ooh. I'm running low on battery. See, I was watching Netflix on it, so that's why it has Netflix up. I'll go to the, uh, the main page here. There we go. That's better. So, my Nexus 10, see, that's what I use, and I love my Nexus 10. I mean, dude. So, you know, if you're looking for an excellent uh, tablet, I can highly recommend the Nexus 10. Now, there's another Nexus 10 coming out soon, you know, a later version, but this one, wow. I mean, I don't see how I can get much better myself. That's just me. 
know what I'm saying? Anyway, point is, this Chromecast app is an official one for the iPhone and iPad. Uh, it makes it easier for users to set up the $35 TV dongle using their iPad and switch between multiple Chromecasts and change common network settings. Whoopee. <laughs> Just say it. You know, okay, I mean, I don't have an iPad, I don't have an iPhone. Okay. If you do, go for it. So, whoa! <laughs> yes! Fred, there you go. Fred's letting us know that there's a Geek Software of the Week. Now, I'm telling you, just, just hold on to your horses. And if you have horses while you're watching the Dr. Bill show, then I'd actually like to see some video of that. <laughs> but anyway, no. The, it's, it's an expression. Give me a break. Anyway, the Geek Software of the Week this week is... Are you ready? Should I remove it? What? <laughs> yes, this software. Let me read you what they say about themselves, as I like to do. Ever wonder how to clean out your computer? Many people do, because it's not unusual to have your PC filled with adware toolbars and other programs you no longer need or probably never even intended to install in the first place. But like most people, what programs you should remove is a tough question. But like, uh, uh, let's see, I read that, ha. Well, we have your answer. Simply download the award-winning Should I Remove It app and wonder no more. The app is a tiny, lightweight program designed to show you what programs you have installed on your computer and quickly determine what programs you can safely remove. So if you're wondering, what's that weird program that I have no idea what it is, and is it malware? Now you can know. It's kind of cloud, cloud, crowd sourced <laughs> in its approach. Basically what it does is people report in to, should I remove it, if the software that they have found on their computer is evil. And if it is, should I remove it, puts in there, this is evil, and it shows up as a red bar on the thing. And the redder it is, the worse it is. Okay? So, and if it's green, you know, there's a yellow for caution and green for yeah. So if it's green, uh, like Sea Cleaner, for instance, dude, I mean, come on, Sea Cleaner is awesome. Then it shows up as green. And you can leave it on there and use it and, and be content and happy and know that this is safe. Which is pretty cool. So, anyway, should I remove it? It's very small. You download it, bam, you, it's quick. You download it, you install it, you run it, it goes. Actually, it doesn't make any noise, but it sounds cool to do that. <laughs> anyway, it goes out across your PC and it looks at your PC and it says. Yes, it's safe, or no, it's not. And then you can uninstall it. How cool is that? Now take a look at this. I did it again. <laughs> See, it's the problem with looking at a monitor of yourself, and it's, you know, and it's just you get your directions wrong. Anyway, look over here. <laughs> that is the bacon car. You know you want one. I know I want one, dude. A Ford Fiesta wrapped in bacon. No, not really wrapped in bacon. That would be yucky. <laughs> you know, it'd be kind of messy and bleh. <laughs> bacon should be eaten. <laughs> Trust me, I know these things. Anyway, but look at that. Look at that. That's awesome. It's bacon. It's like one of those wraps, you know, uh, plasticky display wrappy things. <laughs> well anyway, the bacon wrap for your car from Ford is an option. What? Yes, you can order a Ford Fiesta and have it wrapped in bacon, graphically speaking. Geek culture! Dude! <laughs> now earlier, well, tell you what, before we do that, let me mention this. Our sponsor this week is DrBillBailey.net Netcast once again. We encourage you, we, we actually implore you 
we, we beg you. <laughs> Go out and get a Roku and sign up for drbillbailey.net netcast. Do it now! You can always click on the little Roku link, ad link there on the old drbill.tv blog. That's www.drbill.tv blog there. Blog is not part of the address, but it's, it is a blog. Anyway, go there, click through the link, buy yourself a Roku, and then go to the Roku channel store. I'm doing this, I have no idea why. <laughs> go to the Roku channel store, and then sign up for the DrBillBailey.net netcast channel. And when you do, be sure to five star us. Yes! You say, Dr. Bill, when are you going to get a real sponsor back on the show? A very important one is coming, perhaps as early as next week. And I'm excited about it. I'm so excited I want to talk about it, but I can't. So I'll just have to chill. Anyway, I was mentioning earlier that Apple is kind of, yeah, you know, they're kind of fading from excitementness. That's not a word. Oh, well. Anyway, they have a plan to create a program where you can trade in your iPhone and get money on your new iPhone. Basically, they want you to keep using an iPhone instead of going to Android like I did. Well, well, actually, I was already on Android. I was just on a Droid X instead of a Optimus G Pro. Did I mention I really like my Optimus G Pro? It's really pretty awesome. So I've got an awesome Nexus 10. I've got an awesome Optimus G Pro. I've got an awesome lighting outfit here. Life is good. And yesterday was the Game Master's birthday. My son, the Game Master, is now 21 years old, which I find troubling. <laughs> it basically means that I'm 21 years older than I was when he was born, which seems like just a few days ago, from my perspective. Yes, from my perspective, many things seem, you know, long ago but not so not so much for me you know what it you know, um. <laughs> i mean you th i think about 1992 see that's when he was born 1992 think about 1992 those of you that go back as far as i do 1992 was the year that the world wide web was introduced to the world yes 1992 was the year that linux was created now think about this. I remember getting the email from Elena Storvalls saying, I'm going to create an operating system based on Minix. Anybody's interested out there? And I went, yes. I replied to the email from Linus. Dude. I mean, you don't get more into Linux than me. I was there first. Matter of fact, I have a letter, actual letter from Red Hat, congratulating me for being one of their, their first 100 customers. Yes, I know. Geezer, huh? <laughs> Dude, I'm a part of history. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you got to stroke your own ego once in a while. You didn't know that the ego was located in the beard, did you? You learn a lot of things on the Dr. Bill netcast. Right. Anyway, so 21 years ago. Yes. Long time. Anyway, the netcast, my battery is about to run out here. Just a few moments left. So I'd better head out of here. You knew I was winding down anyway, right? So remember until next time that the doctor is out of here.
Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillDaily.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.